white nose. What's the matter with you? Hello. Oh, yeah. Damn, damn. Is a bass horn in there? Oh, baby. On the 12th of February, five days after celebrating his 100th birthday at his home in Brooklyn, Eubie Blake, the legendary ragtime composer and pianist, died. He was recently interviewed by American television about a career that began in the 19th century. You know, Eubie, the, the secret of a long life is supposed to be plenty of exercise, eat right, and above all, don't smoke. You seem to violate every one of those every rules. Every last one. I know, I know I eat a pound and a half of candy a week. I know I eat that. Cigarettes. I want one now so bad that I can't do it. What about? I smoke all the time. Yep. Thank you. Ever since I was six years old, I smoked cigarettes. You be and brother six years after he began smoking. In 1898, one of the first newsreels showed black soldiers returning from war in depressed times, with little more than manual labor as a prospect. For the young Yubi, the world of entertainment offered a more enticing future. I was at a show called Old Kentucky, and uh, I was with the Buck Dancers. <laughs> Blake's parents were born slaves. At 15, he secretly left his home at night, to the later horror of his religious mother, to try for a job as a pianist at Aggie Sheldon's Bordello. She said, uh, oh, you, you, you play the piano, boy? Let me hear you play something. I play something. All right, you got a job. I pay you three dollars a week. But I knew the house was good for tips. If I didn't make ten, uh, Fifteen dollars, I had a bad night. That was awfully good money in those days. You telling me it was. Later on, the money became even better. By the 1920s, UB Blake was in the big time. Although his career was eclipsed by more modern musical fashions for a number of years, it was with the rediscovery of ragtime in the 1970s that UB again found himself toast of the night spots. third door to the left that's where you'll always find me stuff is there and the chicks fairly romp with glee play the right note what's the matter with you hello ah. damn damn hear the bass horn in there oh baby On the 
12th of February, five days after celebrating his 100th birthday at his home in Brooklyn, Eubie Blake, the legendary ragtime composer and pianist, died. He was recently interviewed by American television about a career that began in the 19th century. You know, Eubie, the, the secret of a long life is supposed to be plenty of exercise, eat right, and above all, don't smoke. You seem to violate every one of those rules. Every last one. I know, I know I eat a pound and a half of candy a week. I know I eat that. Cigarettes. I want one now so bad that I can't just... Hey, what about? I smoke all the time. Yep. Thank you. Ever since I was six years old, I smoked cigarettes. Yubi and brother, six years after he began smoking. In 1898, one of the first newsreels showed black soldiers returning from war in depressed times, with little more than manual labor as a prospect. For the young Yubi, the world of entertainment offered a more enticing future. I was at a show called Old Kentucky, and uh, I was with the Buck Dancers. <laughs> Blake's parents were born slaves. At 15, he secretly left his home at night, to the later horror of his religious mother, to try for a job as a pianist at Aggie Sheldon's Bordello. She said, uh, oh, you, you, you play the piano, boy? Let me hear you play something. I play something. All right, you got a job. I pay you three dollars a week. But I knew the house was good for tips. If I didn't make ten, uh, Fifteen dollars, I had a bad night. That was awfully good money in those days. You telling me it was. Later on, the money became even better. By the 1920s, U.B. Blake was in the big time. Although his career was eclipsed by more modern musical fashions for a number of years, it was with the rediscovery of ragtime in the 1970s that U.B. again found himself toast of the night spots. Everything's free on the top floor, the third door to the left. That's where you'll always find me. Stuff is there, the chicks fairly romp with glee. Another survivor from the golden age of jazz is 88 year old Alberta Hunter, recently out of retirement after 20 years working as a nurse. Like Yubi, Alberta Hunter's career embraced all aspects of show business, including musical comedy and dance. She made some classic jazz recordings with Yubi in the 20s and was the first black vocalist to record with a white band. Back when, when both of you were a lot younger and there wasn't that much opportunity around for black entertainers, you had to work in some pretty... Uh, rough places, right? I didn't have to work in the joints, thank God. Even though the places where I worked, the first places, the first place was by prostitutes, white prostitutes and their pimps. But they were wonderful to me. You understand, it wasn't a joint. 
The second place was where the colored confidence men and their pickpocket girlfriends hung out. They were wonderful to me. I was lucky enough not to have to work in joints, thank God. I have worked some places. Well, that, you see with my back to the door now? I never sit that way. I only sit this way now because I have to sit. Because you selected that seat. Why wouldn't now, you sit with your back to the door? Because, I tell you, now you're in this jump place. There comes this girl and uh, somebody says something about her or something. Well, I'm playing the piano like this. Here comes a bottle. <laughs> Stop that, see? Anything can happen to you. In 1915, Yubi teamed up with his longtime partner and lyricist Noble Sissel. A top act in vaudeville, they fought to present a dapper appearance in a period when black performers were expected to be dialect comedians in ragged clothes. I got you, you got you, all got you and got you. Oh, when you get to him, wanna put on the shoes, wanna walk all over, got him, 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 him. And everybody talks about him, they ain't going to him, him, him. Gotta walk all over, got that thing, walk that thing, walk that thing. I come in first, the sizzle's behind me. And I look, sister said, what is that over there? I said, that's a pie Anna. <laughs> I said, no, first I said, I don't know. So I go over and touch the pie, pie Anna. And play. he said, can you play? No, I ain't never played no pie Anna before. Get the dialect with cork and ragged clothes. And another thing, I never got a chance to play big time you know, I had to always put on an Angie Mimey dress, and so did uh, uh, Ethel Waters. Ethel Waters and I had to put on Angie Mimey clothes because they wouldn't Amer let uh, Negro women play the big time without having to do those kind of things, you understand? And then th they did put us on the bill where there's another white singer. We'd always have to be second on the bill in order to warm it up for the, for the woman that's coming along. Oh, and if she didn't like you, you, you're off that bill, off that program. You understand? Your people... They knew better, but they don't want to say that we had romances, same as anybody else. So, they never had a love song in a college show. You couldn't stand up and say, oh, darling, I love you. Never. Yeah. They didn't want to. They resented that. I've got that old-fashioned love. Memories of You, one of the most enduring of U.B. Blake's over a thousand compositions. But at the turn of the century, Broadway still looked to the Edwardian musical for its hit songs. And flowery romantic imports like Leslie Stewart's Floradora first stirred the imagination of the teenage composer. I want the people in London to know that in England, I don't know where he was born, 
But Leslie Stewart is the cause, direct cause, of me being becoming a composer. I liked his style. He wrote a number called Sextet from uh, Floor Door, uh, 1900, uh, where it first came out over here. Uh, I, it played at the Ford's Theater in Baltimore. That's my hometown. That's why I heard this music. And uh, this is the tune. I can write tunes like that. I'm Just Wild About Harry from Yubi's 1921 musical, which introduced jazz to Broadway and was the first all black show there. It was called Shuffle Along. Revived off-Broadway in 1978, Shuffle Along proved such a success that later the same year it was expanded into the Broadway show simply named Yubi. If I'd known I was going to live to a hundred, I'd have taken better care of myself. Gala tributes showered Yubi as he reached his centenary, sole survivor of an eccentric musical era. Like the ragtime music he helped to create, a truly American original.
Classical right, ladies and gentlemen. Classical right. Thank you. Classical right, ladies and gentlemen, classical right. Thank you. <laughs> 